back into 11th, coming back three laps down. But this is the final circuit here for Indy Pro 2000. As Nolan Siegel looking to get a win here in his debut weekend in Indy Pro 2000. Siegel pushing hard. Got a pretty good gap against Foster, but Foster is closing up. I think it's going to be too little too late. The only other opportunity would be a dive bomb down to the inside of turn number 10. But for a driver like Foster, with the other two drivers who finished in the podium yesterday finishing outside the top 10, a second place uh, result would be amazing here for Louis. The Brit trying to work on Siegel. He is not going to be close enough into turn number 10, I believe. They'll work their way down here indeed. Still about three car lengths back. Able to clear Braden Eads, Braden Eads, but not quite able to get the job done. And again, it took a couple of years for Nolan Siegel to get that first USF 2000 win. He only has to wait to race number two in Indy Pro. We got rookies winning race one. We got a rookie winning race two. Out of California, the winner here in Florida, Nolan Siegel. Twin checkers for Siegel, the D-Force racing driver. Seven-tenths of a second win over Louis Foster. What a race. Here's kind of an interesting story. In a way, it starts, as many do these days, go-karts. And that's where you came out of. But, man, you have quickly branched into a variety of different categories of cars, haven't you? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so I started in go-karts out at Sonoma Raceway, and then I went into the USF 2000 Championship in 2019 um, on the road to Indy, and I've stayed on the road to Indy um, until now. Um, I'm racing Indy Pro 2000 full-time, and I've been doing... A few IMSA races here and there. I did the Daytona 24 and now back here at the Watkins Glen six hour. The Indy Pro 2000 cars, those are seriously quick open wheel machines. Um, how do you make the transition from something of, of that performance envelope to something like what you're running here, the, the, the uh, LMP3 prototype or racing in some of the GT cars? Yeah, they're very different. Um, the prototype and the open wheel car are much more similar than the open wheel car and the, the GT car. Um, so it was a bigger change to go to GT4 and, and things like that. Um, but I've really been enjoying the, the mix up and it's been cool to drive all these different kinds of cars. What do you find to be the most difficult adjustment to make hopping from one into the other? Braking zones or you know anything? Yeah, the GT cars are a lot heavier. Um, so everything happens a bit slower and you have to just slow everything down um, whereas the open wheel car everything is a fast movement and in the GT car it just doesn't work so you have to back up the brake zones be smoother on the throttle smoother with the steering and just slow everything down be a little bit calmer and how about the downforce of the Indy Pro car versus the prototype you're running or the GT car um, the prototype actually has similar, if not more, downforce than the open wheel car. Um, the GT car has, the GT4 especially, has almost zero. Um, so, again, that, that's what makes the prototype a little bit more similar to the open wheel car, whereas the GT car is completely different. A lot of people don't often put together the fact that downforce, yeah, it helps you go through a corner, but it helps you break later into the corner. And so, when you're in that GT car, you got to be mindful of backing those zones up. Right? Yep. Yep, it does not slow down very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of the challenge that obviously you enjoy just a little bit. The other thing I wanted to mention, you started, as I understand you mentioned, at Sonoma when you first started. That is one of the most technical, low-grip tracks that anybody could imagine. That had to be an amazing training ground because if you could be quick around that place, I think you could be quick pretty much anywhere, can't you? Yeah, I think it was actually really helpful because... I had never really driven anywhere else when I started at Sonoma and learning there helped me a lot of other places. It made a lot of other tracks seem a little bit easier to learn and, and a little bit less complex than, than a place like Sonoma. Yeah, and it's so technical and so many blind approaches and the like. All of those things that can come at you in a hurry in a car, you've already been tuned into them by the time you start stepping up into these on uh, these quicker machines. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, that makes it really interesting. Where do you want to go now in your career? Obviously, you're spending a lot of time in open wheel stuff. IndyCar, that's the goal? That's the goal right now. Um, I've really been enjoying the IMSA side of things, um, but I'd like to continue with my open wheel career for a little bit and see see if I can make it to IndyCar, and that, that would be the ultimate goal. So you've got a progression there that, uh, that you can go through. If you do well in Indy Pro, you looking to get into Indy Lights that, and then step up? That's, that's the goal, <laughs> yep. Excellent. Well, obviously, you've got a real future in front of you. And one of the things as well is you're connected a little bit to Race for RP. And uh, you're one of the younger ambassadors, if you will, uh, for the Race for, R uh, for RP program. 
but it's the youth and exuberance that it's going to help spread the word and create that awareness. You've got to be pretty proud to carry that banner. Yeah, it's been great having the Race for RP logo on, on my car in the open wheel season for, this is the second year now. Um, and yeah, it's been amazing. It's been great having them along, along with my other partners and I had a few podiums where I've gotten to represent them and it's been, it's been great. And helping spread the word about this, this nasty disease and uh, the efforts trying to come up with some sort of a solution to it. They still don't know what causes it. They don't exactly know how to treat it. They can, they can sort of mitigate the, uh, the symptoms a little bit. And people, since it's not a well-known disease, people don't realize how many millions of people it affects. Right, well, that's what makes raising awareness so important, right? And raising awareness and raising money for, for research is, is really important, and it's great that we've been able to do that through racing.